This is ContactTalkRadio.com. Consciousness in action. And you are taking action into your consciousness by tuning into Contact Talk Radio. And on TuneIn.com, Hing.fm, and Upsnap Mobile. Contact Talk Radio. You're listening to Dear Venus with your host, Venus Andrix. Hi, everybody. Hey, it's nice to see you. It's February 12th, 2013. Beautiful, sunny, Southern California, cold. Weather report done. Okay. Today it's Dead Celebrity Day. Woo, hoo, hoo. You know, every once in a while we just decide or I decide that we're going to talk to a dead celebrity and I never know who. Well, now I do. I was in bed the other night thinking, who am I going to talk to? And guess who came in? Bill Cagney, the producer. Uh, he was a big producer in Hollywood, uh, the brother of Jimmy Cagney with Yankee Doodle Dandy. If you're too young to know, I'll do a little education in a few minutes here. But first of all, I do take your calls and uh, I look into you, people in your life, dead people, live people, whatever they may be, your situations, try and help you change things, make things better with energy. Um well, you know, what don't I do, right? I try everything. <laughs> Even if I don't know what I'm doing, I try and make it happen. So, the number to call is 1-877-230-3062. This is All Countries. You can call the show now, 1-877-230-3062. If you get a busy signal, you just have to keep trying. And remember, after I've talked to somebody and they hang up, that means there's a line free for a moment at least. All right, before we start, I want to tell you just briefly, uh, Summer and I did the Love Teleclass last Saturday. Uh, we haven't done one for a few years, and maybe we're going to do them again, maybe next year. But this is to bring love into your life of all kinds. And I'll tell you, I was really hot. <laughs> I was. I amazed myself. I started working on your wishes like a week and a half before as they came in. You know, you gave a wish about what you wanted to happen in your love life. And I went into your head and found you, even though I've never met you, seen you, uh, and sort of revamped the wish the way I felt it should go and the way I saw. And I worked and worked and worked at making this happen. I put a lot of energy on it. And, uh, I mean, I was working. I'd wake up in the night and I was working. I was sitting out during the day working. And the class just kept getting bigger and bigger. And I thought, oh, my gosh, I can't keep up. And this is a lot of work. And it is a lot of work. And uh, But then I said, Mom, I need your help. And, you know, my mom is the one I learned how to do the mojos from the big the big energy stuff from the universe. And she died a little over two years ago. But I immediately felt like she was there, and so we were both working on them. Let me tell you, by the time class started, I was just bouncing off the walls. I was just a woo-hooing and whooping. I was, I was so full of it. And here's a testimonial that came in after the show one of them, and she said uh, afterwards, apparently, she laughing uncontrollably in the shower, and all I could think of was, wow, that Venus, she's so electric, and my God, what a mover and a shaker she is, how she can just maneuver those energies around like that, because I knew it was working, and then I woke up at 2 a.m., all of a sudden, I could feel Blank's presence in front of me, Looking into my eyes, I then began to feel a big expansion of my heart and felt like crying as I could feel him opening up and could feel all the love. This lasted for a long time. So, Venus, I wanted to tell you in detail in case you share this. And I, too, have never felt so much power in you and Emojo. This was a very powerful class. And sometimes now I feel like I'm the junior medium and you are the big one. Anyway, I think I'm not alone in wishing that you also gather up this energy for what you want. You're sending you a big, beautiful, sumptuous bouquet of velvety, fragrant roses for your Valentines. And thank you for all you do. I love you very much. Isabella from France. Um, By the way, I do this kind of work for you when I'm doing phone readings, too. I often do it on air when I have the time. Well, I'm always doing it. In one way or another, when I have more time, like in personal uh, phone readings, I can really get into it. Um, And sometimes I'm much more quiet about it, of course. But you never know. But uh, obviously, I can call on my mother to help give double whammies now. 
To find out more about what I do and readings and how to contact me, just go to my website, GodIsAlwaysHappy.com. GodIsAlwaysHappy.com. Look for readings, anything else you want. Okay, so let's get into this. Let's get into the other side. All right, some of you are maybe too young to remember uh, Jimmy Cagney. He did Yankee Doodle Dandy and many others, and he was, I think he was the biggest name in Hollywood for a long time. And his brother, Bill, was the producer, uh, and they were both, well, Jimmy was a megastar, and, and Bill was a very powerful producer. And uh, so here's, here's the story here about what's going on. Uh, like I said, Mr. I call him Mr. Cagney, Bill Cagney, uh, came to me while I was sitting up in bed thinking, who am I going to talk to? And there he was. And I said, oh, you know, hello. So I knew uh, Mr. Cagney, who we call Bill, and I knew Jimmy Cagney, and I knew their sister Jeannie and brother Dr. Ed when I was growing up because they were friends of our family. And here's how this happened. Uh, my folks, my parents are both farm and land brokers. They b- dealt with huge tracts of land, acres and acres, and big, big ranches. And so they attracted uh, and had as clients a lot of the very wealthy, rich, famous, that kind of thing. So it wasn't unusual or anything. But one night, Dad got a phone call. He was eating dinner, and this man said, "You know, his name, Mr. His name is Bill Cagney, he's a producer in Hollywood, and he wanted to talk to Dad about some land." And my dad said. I don't care who you are, I'm eating my dinner. <laughs> and I don't talk to anybody when I'm eating my dinner. And I guess uh, Bill Cagney said something like, well, you know, I'm Jimmy Cagney's brother. I don't care who you are. Anyway, my father wouldn't talk to him. Can you imagine? And uh, Bill Cagney was so impressed by my father's attitude that he called him the next day. He came down and... Um, started doing business with him, and eventually he and my father became best friends. They were each other's best friend, best, best friend. But because of this, uh, the Cagneys, we we came to know the Cagneys very well. Of course, we were kids. I'm the oldest of six, and we were always instructed to call Bill Cagney, the producer, Mr. Cagney. We called Jimmy Cagney, Jimmy, because everybody called him Jimmy. And we called Dr. Ed, Dr. Ed, and Jeannie, we called her Jeannie, I believe, Anyway, they just loved my family. They just loved us. I think because we were, well, we didn't care about movie stars. We we didn't even really know that much about movie stars. And it was our attitude uh, because, you know, being famous, I would imagine that you had a lot of people schlepping around and, uh, you know, saying nice things to you and just, you know, you didn't have real friends. You didn't know who to trust, but we didn't care. We just liked them, and what they had was a, they had a huge motorhome, enormous, and they would drive it down from L.A. all the time and park it right outside our house, and they would stay there for a week, couple weeks at a time, and they'd often bring their famous friends, too. I remember one. I can't remember his name, but do you remember the old guy who played Jed? I think it was Jed Clampett in the Beverly Hillbillies. I remember he was there and his wife. I think they got a divorce later, and then she started up some club in Hollywood for the divorced wives of movie stars or something. But anyway, so they were just a part of our lives. And uh, i got to tell you some stories now. I've told some of these things before. I'm just going to pretend that I haven't. Uh, And I'm, I'm giving you background here before I talk to Mr. Cagney. But by the time we knew them, they were older Still famous, of course, but Jimmy Cagney was a great big fat man by then, and so was Bill Cagney, so was Dr. Ed. I think Jeannie, I remember her as being normal. But these they were great big huge fat men, and uh, Bill especially was not healthy. I mean, they'd lived the big life. They had eaten whatever they wanted, uh, drunk whatever they wanted, ran wherever they wanted, did whatever. They, you know, they just whipped themselves <laughs> out of a good body, you might say. But what they loved to do is when they came down, and by the way, my folks, my mother would never allow us to eat candy sugar. She followed Adele Davis. We drank Tiger's Milk, and, all, and we hardly got anything to eat because we didn't have a lot to eat back then most of the time. So we were all pretty skinny, and we lived healthy, but she wouldn't allow any sugar and cakes and stuff like that. So 
But when the Cagneys came down, anything went. These men loved their cakes, their danishes, their donuts, all this stuff. And do you remember the bread man? Did you have them in your town? We always had a bread man. He had this sort of rounded van, and he'd come driving in the drive, and he always had bread to sell, sell and cakes and cookies and Danish and all kinds of stuff. You know, sometimes we'd get some bread. That was about it. But he always knew when the Cagneys were down, he'd see their great big motor home, and he'd come flying up the drive, and he'd hop out and throw up in the back and pull out trays and trays of danishes with all these jams in the middle, the lemon curd and the strawberry and the boysenberry and all these cakes and cookies with sprinkles on them. Oh, my gosh. We kids would just go crazy because we knew what was going to happen, that Cagneys were going to just take their arms and sweep piles of them off and into bags and take them in the house where we'd all get to eat them. But the most exciting thing or most interesting thing about that whole thing was the bread man always wore his pajamas. I'm not kidding. He always wore his pajamas. And we always wondered about this, and nobody ever said anything. But one day we kids got up the courage, and we asked him, why do you always wear your pajamas to work? And he said, because they're comfortable. And we said, okay, that makes sense. <laughs> And whenever we'd have our friends over and they'd have to be around, happen to be around, uh, they always asked that question when the bread man would come in. Why does he wear his pajamas? And we'd say, well, he's comfortable. But anyway, so back to the Cagneys. And so they bring in all this trove of stuff and they put it all over the tables. We had a huge conference table we all sat at because there were so many kids in the family. And um, they just load everything down, and we would just eat whatever we wanted. But one of the stranger things was my mother would always make them coffee, and they'd never put sugar in their coffee. They always put those fake sugar, sweet and low, equal, whatever they were back then, and they'd very carefully put those in their coffee. And we all thought that was pretty darn strange. <laughs> Why would they care? Anyway, I remember one night, My dad told him he was going to make him cornmeal mush. This was one of my father's specialties. He would make cornmeal mush. And he'd, what you do is put cornmeal with, um, well, he'd put it with bacon grease. And, uh, I'm not sure what else he'd do. And he'd cook it on the stove, put it in, um, like bread, what are those things called that you make meatloaves and things in? Those, those things. Anyway, he let them sit out overnight and they'd harden up. And in the morning he'd cut them. And then he'd, he'd cut them into pieces and fry them in bacon grease. And we'd put butter on them and maple syrup. Ooh, they were so good. Well, I remember this one night watching him make it. And uh, he'd been drinking, and he'd been drinking pretty hard. And he put an awful lot of bacon grease into that cornmeal mush. I remember he was he had an apron around his waist, and he was wearing a pair of uh, baby's rubber diaper pants on his head with his ears sticking out. He did this all the time. I know nobody ever believed me when I would tell him that, but all our friends did. They'd come over and see him like this. He liked to do it just for fun. Back then we had rubber uh, pants that you put over diapers, you know, for babies, and he'd take those, put them, pull them over his head with his ears sticking through, and he'd get to work and make cornmeal mush or whatever. I'm not kidding you. This is how I grew up, okay? You think I'm odd. Well, <laughs> guess where it comes from. Anyway, so he made this, and the next morning we got up after he told me, oh, this will be fun. You'll you, you never have eaten better cornmeal mush in your life. He fried it up more bacon grease and served it. Even he could tell that it was horrible. I remember them, everybody sitting around trying to be polite and eat that stuff. Some of the worst meals we ever ate, and probably they did too. Um, one time, Mr. Cagney, this is Bill Cagney, uh, we, he lived up in Newport Beach, and we were visiting him up there. I remember there was a bunch of water right in front of their place. And he said to my brother Jim, he said, would you like to meet John Wayne? Because John Wayne was just a couple of houses down. And Jim looked at him and said, oh, I don't care one way or the other. He's trying to be cool, you know. So Mr. Cagney said, fine, we won't then. Jim still regrets that. He still regrets that and talks about it. Um, he talked about things like uh, Howard Hughes. Remember Howard Hughes, who later in life became... Um, afraid of germs and 
hold himself up and he was a billionaire and he had the airplanes and all that. Uh, he talks about the wild parties they had and Howard Hughes would uh, fly down the banisters and into the party, stuff like that. And one time Mr. Cagney said to me, because he had a hole in his throat where he had a tracheotomy and he was in bed a lot and he couldn't eat a lot of things. He said to me, he said he'd spent his whole life eating whatever he wanted, drinking, who knows, drugs, he didn't mention that, just doing whatever he wanted. They all did to the max and extreme. And he says, now I have so much money, I could have anything in the world, go anywhere, do anything. He says, I can't do any of it. I can't do any of it. And I remember thinking, well, that's not how I want to end up. And he had had a nurse whose name escapes my mind at the moment, but she took really good care of him, a nice, nice lady, and she had to do everything for him. And when he died, he left her a lot of money and stuff. And one time, Summer, who has the Flow Dreaming show, my daughter, she was three or four. I remember she went over and leaned on Mr. Cagney's knee, and she looked up at him and said, I want to be a star. <laughs> I remember he was so impressed by that, and he says, I'm going to help her be one. Well, turned out that he died before he got around to that, but she could have been. He wanted to make my brother Arthur a movie star. I had two brothers. I have two brothers, Jim and Arthur. He wanted to make Arthur a movie star. He said, I'll make you a bigger star than Robert Redford, uh, Paul Newman, Clint Eastwood. Um, because Arthur had everything. The good looks, the smile, the charm, everything. And, and Mr. Cagney was serious, and he was totally powerful. He could have done it. And Arthur just said, no, he didn't think so. No, thanks. He didn't want to live that kind of life. So that's the background on this. And... Uh, when he came to me and said he wanted to talk to me, I said, okay. I have a feeling he wants to talk to me about the valley I live in and all the changes here. And I see that I've talked so much, I've left myself very little time, but we're going to take some time anyway. So, Mr. Cagney, this is Bill, the producer. Mr. Cagney, are you here? He's laughing. He's He was enjoying all those stories and enjoying the good times. He said, we sure had good times with you folks. And I said, yeah, and I'm on the radio right now. He says, I, I see that. I hear that. <laughs> okay. And uh, what I do, Mr. Cagney, is I periodically try and talk to somebody who's dead on the other side who was uh, famous in some way, and you came through, so I, I'm glad to see you. How is everything with you and your family and everybody? He said, it's really good. And he so, shows me a small child over there. Uh, I may be one of their family who came over too soon, and I don't know what that's all about. Looks like a girl, and I don't know what that means. So, Mr. Cagney, is there anything you wanted to say to the radio audience, or you just wanted to talk with me about something? I got the impression you wanted to talk about the valley and how it's changing. And he said, yes, uh, he he had a lot of property here, he and his brother Jimmy. And he said there's a lot of dissension and discourse about what to do with the valley and how how to uh, what direction it should go in i said yeah we've been having that and he said he likes the fact that a lot of vineyards are going in a lot of wine wineries and murals and it's becoming a real artsy town but still people want to bring in housing developments and i there's the rub it's getting hard to get in and out of town is there anything you want to he and I are sort of talking about that right now. And uh, he likes the idea, actually, of it going the, w- the way it's going, where it would be a place, a, a destination to go to. A be- it's a beautiful valley. He, too, is worried about the entrance and the exits because uh, we have a hard time getting in and out of the valley uh, with all the traffic, and especially when we have big firestorms. We, we've had some trouble and so he's talking about that, and that needs to be fixed before anything else goes in. I agree. Um, and he said, I see your father over here. He says, your father and I talk. Oh, well, that's interesting. Well, how is my father? How is daddy? Uh, I'm just listening here. Hang on a second. I know it's pretty personal, but it's what he wants to talk about. So how's it going with my father? He said, he's an interesting man. We talk a lot, we talk a lot about things. Uh, your father is doing some interesting work, some good work over here. And I'm saying, what are you doing over there? Are you doing anything of interest? He says, well, I'm resting up for one thing. He said, I had a pretty hard life, as you mentioned. He said, so when I got here, I needed to rest up and live a different kind of life, live a different kind of way. He said, I was a power broker. I was involved with power and people and 
all kinds of things, he said. And over here, I've tried to get away from that. And I just wanted to be more meditative and do things um, of, of a quieter nature and for myself and be alone more. And he says, that's why I've come to think about your valley, valley differently than I did when I was alive. Because when he was alive, of course, it was all investments and making money and this and that. But he sees it differently now. Uh, and so he just wanted me to know that. And I'm saying, well, what about our property? See, we have some property that abuts where they want to put in a huge housing development. And there's a lot of controversy. And my folks got it for our old age, our retirement. But the way everything's going, I don't think we'll get any retirement from it because everything's so slow. And he said, just hang on to it. He says, everything will be all right. It's going to work out all right. So is there any, anything you want to say to the to the public? Because they're the ones who are listening to this. I appreciate you being personal here, but is there anything you want to say to the world beyond what you've said? Ah, he looks at Hollywood nowadays, and he just doesn't get it. He said, it's changed so much. He said, the people that are celebrities now, he says, he feels like a lot of them don't deserve to be celebrities. <laughs> what was a different time period, I'm saying? You know, you all were different than they are now. He says, yes, that's true. He says it was a golden age for us, and it's so different now. He said, um, it's just not run the same way. He says, people that make it now as celebrities never would have when he was in the business and vice versa or whatever. But he says, but, you know, I'm not there anymore. I leave it behind. He says, but I, I keep a hand in. I notice he said, there's a lot of, there's too much going on. Too many people doing too many different things. He says, it's just, it's just, there's, he just, he gives me the feeling there's just too much and too many. That, that when he was there, there were fewer stars and, and fewer people doing, um, maybe bigger or different or what he thinks more laudable or interesting things. Mr. Cagney, I'd really like to keep talking to you, but, I'm running out of time here, but you can always come and see me on your own. <laughs> but I do thank you for coming through this morning for the radio, and I hope we can talk together soon. I really do, because I want to ask you if you've seen my mother. He says, oh, yes, I've seen your beautiful mother. She should have been a movie star. And I said, yeah, everybody said that. He said, she should have been a movie star. Yes, yes. Okay, well, I really have to go, but thank you so much. It was really nice talking to you. All right. Whoa. Okay. Uh, well, I'm going to take the next few minutes to get myself together here. But I'll be back to take your calls. And uh, I'm looking forward to uh, revealing and reveling in some excitement in your lives. Venus Andrecht with the Dear Venus Show. love and benefit from the good energy mojos that venus has on her website do you sometimes feel it when she tosses mojos to you on her radio show if so you will extra like her paintings and wall switches because as venus paints she fills her work with powerful good energy mojos venus says when you have these on your walls your home or workplace is always filled with good mojo to help things in your life go better for you When you purchase this very popular art from Venus, she also puts a personal mojo in the piece just for you. You can see and purchase all this great energy art on artmojos.com. That's artmojos.com. Intentionally bring more power of the universe into your life. Many people say that Venus's paintings are always working for them. Let them work for you, too. Some people tell me they listen to my archive radio shows at night because I put them to sleep. When I complain, they say, oh, it's the sound of your voice, Venus. I love it because it relaxes me. Well, okay, that's good then. You can find all my archive shows on iTunes, Pinterest, and YouTube. To find my live and other archive shows, please go to my website, GodIsAlwaysHappy.com, and look under radio on my site. That's GodIsAlwaysHappy.com. And sleep tight. Don't let those bed bugs bite. Want to win a phone reading with Venus? Venus announces a new winner's name every Tuesday on her Dear Venus show. It's easy to get in the possible winner's pot. 
go to her website and look for the blue headphones. Click on them and you'll get a free MP3 mojo from Venus called No Matter What Happens, Everything Is Always Okay. People say Venus's mojos bring many good results into their lives. Clicking on the blue headphones puts you on Venus's latest mailing list where she draws the names for free readings. If you have never clicked on the blue headphones, you're not on the current list. Venus's website is godisalwayshappy.com. That's godisalwayshappy.com. And while you're there, look for more MP3 mojos that you can purchase for a nominal price. You'll be surprised at the happy results they may bring into your life. Are you ready to stop suffering over men? Are you seriously ready to be happy? Are you ready to have a great love life? Venus finally found the answers for an emotionally happy love life. She wrote the five-star book about how you, too, can change your life with certain men or even certain women. In it, you'll read the horrifying and funny true stories of Venus's former love life and the true tales of many of her friends and clients and how they all finally escaped the crying, whining, moaning, emotional trap to find real love and happiness. The e-book is titled Certain Men, How to Unlove Them, Unneed Them, and Replace Them with a Good Guy. It works with certain women, too. People say this book has saved their lives. You can read the first chapter on Venus's website, GodIsAlwaysHappy.com. You can find Certain Men as an inexpensive e-book at all the online bookstores. Certain Men, are you ready to give them the boot? Are you ready for good love? Certain Men, the e-book by Venus Andrecht, now available at all online bookstores. Listening to Dear Venus with your host, Venus Andrecht. Hi, welcome back. All right. Next show, you know, I do a, a live show every Tuesday, same time, 1 p.m. Pacific, 4 p.m. Eastern, where you can call in and talk to me on air. Next show, I call it How I Do Readings for You. I'm going to explain the process as best I can about what I see, what I hear, what I do, etc. Uh, what other people do. We're just going to talk about the whole subject. And, of course, I have another blog. Every Wednesday I put up a new blog. You can subscribe to it on any blog. Just look for the RSS feed. So you won't have to go and find it. But tomorrow, the name of the blog is The Good Doctor. It's a very short story. It's something that happened to me this past week. It's something very shocking and very funny. I think you'll get a bang out of it. I certainly did. It's called The Good Doctor. So be sure and look for my blog, godisalwayshappy.com forward slash blog. You can find uh, all my blogs there now, uh, godisalwayshappy.com forward slash blog. Also remember, I'm now on Google Plus along with Facebook. On Google Plus, it's Venus Andrecht, all small letters. Venus Andrecht, A N D R E. C-H-T. And again, we have a live chat. I love my live chat over here. I like to pop in and out and chat with people who are listening to the show and making comments. And I find out a lot of stuff. And it really helps me um, in in various ways, which I can't remember what they are right now. <laughs> you have to on my head. I'm sorry, folks. I love you on the chat. I know you helped me, but I can't remember how. <laughs> okay, let's get going. Since I'm already out of my head. Still out. Let's go to the studio calls now. It's like eeny, meeny, miny, mo. Let's go with Rebecca, Indianapolis, Indiana. Indiana. Rebecca, are you there? I'm here. Hi, darling. How are you? Hi, I'm doing great. I'm so excited. Good. <laughs> you what? Um, yeah, I'm excited. Oh, you're excited. Um, well, go ahead. Sorry. <laughs> go ahead. I'm excited. I'm excited. Um, I am calling because I would like you to help get me fired. Oh, well, you know, most people want me to get them a job. <laughs> I know, us, I know. T- Rebecca, uh, tell us the story. Tell us the background okay. and what you need. Well, I got this job about seven years ago um, as an entry-level position, and I was overqualified then, but I had, you know, esteem problems, but... Anyway, I move. I, I thought I'd move on, and I haven't. Well, and what kind of I job, really just, Rebecca? Oh, what kind um, of? 
it's an editorial assistant. I want to be in oh. editing. Um, okay. Well, I did want to be in editing. <laughs> um, okay, now let me move forward. Re- Rebecca, me... let me just get this straight here. Yeah. You you are an editorial assistant? Yes. Why don't you like it? Why do you want to be fired? Um, It's just not fulfilling. Like, I, I work on contracts and invoices all day. I don't change anything, really. I don't contribute to anything. I don't have creativity. I don't have anything. <laughs> How, how long? How long have you worked at the job, and is there no way to go up or out? Um, I've worked there seven years, and there's not because of the economy. Whatever they haven't hired from within, they haven't, and no positions are being filled. If somebody leaves, they just close it. There's layoffs coming. Okay. I just want to be a part of those layoffs. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I okay. Bit, but I, I'd rather them let me go than somebody else who desperately needs it. I'm I'm working on starting my own work, and my on my own job. I want to stay home okay. with my kid. Okay. Listen. So. Let me ask you a question. Um, so I assume you want to get fired, so you'll get uh, paid for being out of work. What is that? Work. Yes, work, ma'am. Work, Severance. What yeah. do they call? Okay. And. But if you quit, then you won't, right? Exactly. Exactly. Okay. Well, don't wear your deodorant to work for a few weeks. <laughs> <laughs> oh, sorry. I know that. I don't think that'll quite do it. Um, you don't think so? I put on probation. So um, it's a okay. possible process if they want to fire you at my job. So. Okay. Rebecca, how old are you? What color hair do you have? I'm almost 30. Um, I have reddish-brown hair at the moment, dark. Okay. I suppose you couldn't give me the name of the place, huh? Um, that w- no. <laughs> okay. Why, I just asked. Wiley. John Wiley. Okay. 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 Well, Rebecca, no, let's see what we... Place to work for. It's a wonderful place? It, it's, a, it's a good company. It's just not for me anymore. Okay. Gotcha. All right, so what we're going to do here, folks, out in Radio Land, is I'm going to go into Rebecca, then I'm going to go to her work and see what I can do to get her fired. Now, <laughs> I just I just can't help laughing about this, but hey, I'm here to please. All right, Rebecca, 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 I'm coming into your head now. There you are. Just looking through your eyes, feeling you. <sighs> okay, okay, yes. I feel that feeling. I felt that in jobs I used to have in the far, far past. It's like you just feel trapped like you're thumbtacked to the wall. Fly thumbtacked to a bulletin board or something. Yeah. So almost, it's like you can't move, you know. You just like, you can't hardly breathe. It's that feeling of being closed in somehow. Um, do you, do you have that feeling of being closed in? Are you in an oh, area yeah. where it's very closed in? It's a cube, yeah. It's a cubicle. Oh, okay. Well, then it is closed. And there's no right. the ceiling. There's no way to move up. There's no. <laughs> okay. Yeah, okay. Totally trapped. Okay. Okay. And who would I talk to? Who would fire you? Um, my boss. Her name is Mary Beth, or her boss, um, Neil. Okay. He's in San Francisco. My boss is here in Indianapolis, and then her boss is in San Francisco. Okay. Mary Beth and Neil. Mary Beth. Mary Beth. I'm a friend of. Rebecca's, I need to fire Rebecca. She doesn't like it here. She's not happy here. I need to let her go. Other people need to stay. They want their job. She doesn't really want her job, I can tell. She wants to be doing something else. I need to let her go. It's okay to let her go. And there's other people who really need the work, and she doesn't. I want to let her go. Going into Neil now. Rebecca doesn't need the job. She doesn't appreciate the work. She doesn't want to be here. We need to close that position. Other people here need the work, want the work. We've got to tighten the ship here. There's a few people we need to keep. We need to get rid of these. I feel like they're going to get rid of maybe quite a few people. Yeah. It feels like that. And I I put you in that pile, and it's kind of a gray pile. It's sort of a gray shadow. A gray shadowy place, and I don't. I want to be careful not to push anybody else out who doesn't have to go out. But there's a pile of you that I think are probably going to go. Bam, bam, bam. That's you, Rebecca. Bam. What kind of work did you want to do at home? Um. Well, I I will edit for some time, but I want to do healing and actually clairvoyant reading and stuff like that. Uh huh. Okay. All right. Well, begin practicing that now while you're slaving away near the waste baskets. Um, I am. <laughs> okay. Okay, anything else? Let me see if there's anything else I need to do before I move on here. Anything else we need to do with Rebecca here? 
just a little energy to get you out. I don't want to send that out in the world because everybody else wants jobs. <laughs> okay, Rebecca, let us know when you get fired, okay? I'm not sure. Bless you. Thank oh. you so much. Oh, you're so welcome. Thanks for the call. <laughs> okay, let's see what time we've got here. Ooh, you know what? It's almost time for a break. Why don't we just take that break and get it over with? It's the last one. I'll come back and devote myself to calls here. There's a line free because she just hung up, and the number is all over the world. Let's see, 877-230-3062. That's 877-230-3062. All countries, there's a free line. I'll be right back. Venus Andrecht with the Dear Venus Show. Attention business owners and entrepreneurs. Are you looking for help with your online marketing? Or do you need a beautifully designed custom website that you can edit yourself at an affordable price? Contact Heather at StudioThirdEye.com. She will make it happen for you online. From website design, branding, social media, to getting found on the internet. You can reach Heather at StudioThirdEye.com. Heather's professional and fair and has many happy clients from small and mid-sized businesses. Find her at StudioThirdEye.com. That's Studio T-H-I-R-D-E-Y-E dot com. Or you can email intuitiveinternet at gmail dot com and tell her what you need to accomplish. Heather will make it easy for you. Hi, I'm Venus's daughter, Summer McStravick. And as they say, the apple doesn't fall far from the tree. That's why I think you might enjoy my podcast, Flow Dreaming. It airs live on Tuesday, right before Venus's show. Or you can find it on iTunes or at my website, flowdreaming.com. I work with energy and I look in people's lives, just like Venus. Except I call what I do, Flow Dreaming. And I teach other people to manifest and create in their lives using this flow energy too. So I hope you'll check out my podcast, Flow Dreaming, on iTunes, CTR, or at FlowDreaming.com. Venus thinks the world needs cheering up. Let me tell you, her blog certainly does that. Every week, it's a true story about her life and the people in it. Here are a few comments. Oh, thank you. I am laughing so hard. Every Wednesday, it's great to start my day like this. And love, love, love to read your blogs. You always make my day. I have emailed your blogs on to many people this year. And your blogs are profound, prophetic, and wise. They make me laugh and cry and everything in between. And, okay, Venus, I almost spewed coffee out of my nose reading this one. Too funny. By the way, her family subscribes to her blog for their own protection. You can subscribe, too. Just look for the orange-colored feed at the top of the blog. You can find the latest and often harrowing adventures in Venus's life at godisalwayshappy.com forward slash blog. That's godisalwayshappy.com forward slash blog. Listening to Dear Venus with your host Venus Andrecht. Hi, welcome back. Um, over in the chat room, by the way, chat room, I accidentally uh, lost you because I was trying to find out about the shooting. You know that guy in, in Southern California who who was, was a cop and he's killing cops and their families. I guess they're exchanging gunfire with him in San Bernardino Mountains. That's a big bear. Do you know that Summer and her family was just up there last weekend? As soon as they left, just a few hours later, there was a big uh, bus crash and a lot of people died and then uh, this guy got loose up there and he held somebody captive in their cabins and tied him up I told Summer a few days ago she was lucky she got out of there just in time but anyway so that's happening right now um, before we get back to our calls I thought I'd read you uh, one thing here do you remember a show I did 
gosh, was it a year or so ago? It was about Anne the artist and her troubles with Mr. Scrubbermaker, the tax collector. She's in Europe, and she wrote me a note and said, Hi, my dear Venus, all is so very well with me. Beautiful peace and quiet in my little house. Can see the stars at night, even though I'm ten minutes walk from the town center. Feeling at one with all things in calm, now that I'm putting down roots. Very Miss Marple from Agatha Christie. Dating only myself now is great fun. I thought that was nice because she's just happy with herself, and I hear that a lot with people who stop stopped dating. They're just much happier. <laughs> Sorry to say. All right, so we've got a winner. Remember, every Tuesday I choose a new winner for a five, uh, ten minute, excuse me, ten minute free phone reading with me. In order to get in the pot, the right pot, you have to be on the current mailing list. Um, to be in the current one, you need to go to my website, godisalwayshappy.com, click on the blue headphones, and that puts you on the current list, plus you get that free MP3 mojo. So the winner today is Bob Mayer, M-E-Y-E-R. Bob Mayer. Bob, you can uh, email me anytime through February 18th, 2013, and claim your prize. After that, it's null and void. And by the way, last week's winner uh, has contacted me for her free, free reading, Cordelia Giles. So, you're out there winning, and I'm out there working. Uh, again, chat room, sorry I've lost you. I don't have time to get you back here because i got to get busy. But uh, let's go, let's see, who... Who needs some work over here? Yeeny, meeny, miny, moe. All right, Julie, St. Louis, Missouri. Hello, Julie. Hello. How are you, darling? Oh, my gosh. I can't believe I made it on. <laughs> oh, here you are. Here you are. Oh, I well, emailed we... you about the um, Humphrey cleanse and if it was safe or not. Oh, right. That was a while ago. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I wrote a book. For people who don't know, called uh, the Herb Lady's Notebook. It's still out there. It's still out there on Amazon and other places. And uh, yeah, it's how to get yourself healthy and well with herbs. And my life as an herbalist. It's a pretty funny book. They're all true stories too. Yeah. But Julie, great. what am I going to do for you today? What's up? Yeah. So, oh my gosh. So, um, had some amazing recent developments over the last couple of weeks. A bit of a roller coaster. But um, I just got offered a really great job today. Um, oh. Uh, Yes, it's a great job at a great institution with a, a really wonderful team of people. Uh-huh. Um, but there's a bit of a conflict with um, this other job that I have. Um, and I just, what I, I, the main thing going through my head is I just want to be able to work for everyone, do all these different jobs and these various different fields that make me happy and make sure all my employers are happy, nobody's disappointed because I know there's enough time in the day. It's just a matter of lining it all up in a fashion that, you know, works out for everyone. What kind of work do you do? So um, I'm a marine biologist most mm-hmm. recently, and um, I just got my master's. Um, Summer helped me with that, actually. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and um, I also teach dance and yoga. So okay. um, a bit of a balance there, and I really need both in my life to be maximally happy. Um, and so, so I just got, what? yeah. What is it your question, or what do you want me to do? So, um, I guess um, whether it's like um, any insight you could see into me as to action I could take to, you know, make sure my employers are happy, or like talking to my employers and making well, wait, sure. Wait, wait, you have do you have two employers right now? So there's one job that I'm about to start. Um, it's at the at a lab doing science mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. then there's the other one which is the dance and yoga job so is there a problem like not enough time of the day do you have to stay up 24 hours or <laughs> what's what's the issue well, right so um the classes i'm teaching right now for the dance and yoga um kind of cuts into the work day a little bit mm-hmm. and if they could just be adjusted to be like a little bit later in the day mm-hmm. um, well uh, believe it or not as you started talking about that the the words I heard in my head were that you needed to adjust the hours, and it feels oh. like you would have freedom to do that. Okay. It, because if you can't do that, then you won't do that. But if are you working for somebody who who you're teaching for? Is that it? Yes. Yeah. And well, see I, if you can change it. Just well, just tell them yeah. tell them the truth. You have a real job, and you want to keep doing this other one, but you have to adjust the hours. 
yeah, I had a conversation with her about it this morning, and she sounded a bit like, well, you just started. We just got the schedule figured out. We just marketed your class. You know, Mm -hmm. it it seems like it would be really difficult to change, but I know I feel like it's possible. Well, it is possible, and the thing is, if she doesn't do that, you can't stay there, and so all the work she's done would be for naught because you'd have Mm -hmm. to do your other job, right, as a marine biologist? Yeah, Mm -hmm. so uh, it's really not a question here. She either will or she won't, and if she doesn't, won't, can't, then she loses all the time and money she put into it, and you'll do it somewhere else. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you don't sound like you believe it. (laughs) I guess I have a lot of self-doubt about this, Um, you know, my services. It's kind of a new class that I'm offering. I sort of invested Mm -hmm. it, and Mm -hmm. um, I've gone to a lot of different studios and gyms and a lot of people have been apprehensive about it but she really latched on so i'm putting a Uh lot of faith in her so yeah Yeah. well you know what i see here uh julie is that you have to have the marine biologist job okay if that's very important you're good at it you resonate with it you need it for your health care your retirement you know all this stuff in the future uh you're not going to get that with the yoga classes Mm. we're being reasonable here uh, you can work it out. Maybe you'll have to only do one class for a while or not as many classes. Or I, I just think it's going to be worked out in one way or another. I don't, mm-hmm. I don't feel you should worry about it. Just You've told her where it sits and you told her what you can do and what you can't and then just go with whatever she is willing to do or not. Okay. And it'll work out. It'll be fine. I don't feel bad about it. I feel uh, fine. I just feel good about it. Okay. So okay. I guess that's okay. one less thing you can worry about. That's great. Yeah, I was worried, so I, I, I'm glad I called because I feel a lot better now. Yes, well, good. Yes, stop worrying. Okay, in fact, <laughs> in fact, let's give you a little mojo and everybody oh, else yeah, out there. Yeah. How about a stop worrying mojo? Would we all like one of those? You know, I think we all need one of those once in a while. I was thinking yesterday and today, I was taking a little walk, and I was thinking, I'm just going to be happy from now on. Whatever happens, just be happy with it. It's all an adventure. It's something interesting. Uh, et cetera, et cetera. Um, you know, just let's just go with it. Whatever happens, happens. So here we go, everybody. Uh, Julie, you're getting it first, but it's going to splatter on everybody else, go right through you. So you grab it, and anybody else who wants to stop worrying, here we go. Woo! Woo! Bam, bam, bam! Woo, 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 ah, <laughs> that just came through. A happy oh, laugh. That was a laugh. So happy. Folks. No, I had a big smile on my face. That made me so well, happy. Well, good. <laughs> Mojo. <laughs> Bam. Thank you, Julie. Thanks for the call. You'll be fine. Thank you so much, Tina. You're welcome. Also, I want to mention something we we're talking about on chat. Some people wondered um, where, let me see, uh, a couple of weeks ago, Summer and I did two hours together. We did a show, her show and my show, back to back. We worked with love. We worked with people. We had a hilarious time. And uh, they wanted to know where they could get the two shows together. I'm going to talk to Summer and see if she can put them up on Facebook, and I'll put them on my Facebook and on my Google+. Plus. And uh, also, you can always find them as podcasts. Um, but I'll see. I'll work on that. All right. Let's see what time we've got. Oh, we have time. We have time. We have time. Um, Joanna, Riverside, California. Joanna, hello. Hi, Summer. No, this is Venus. Uh-uh. <laughs> <laughs> I know it's Venus, but I'm so tired. I don't know what I'm saying. Joanna, I sometimes I get mixed up, and you know what I call her? I call her Mom. I say, hey, Mom. You know, it's like I've always done this, even since she was a little kid. So call me whatever. So <laughs> I've talked to you before, haven't I, on the air? Yes, yes, and... What did we talk about? Would you remind us, remind everybody? Um, had an abusive husband that became physical, and everybody think he's nice. And oh, uh, yeah. And I got a restraining order against him. But uh, right before Christmas, when he comes and pick up the kids, we got to talk a little bit because he wants things from the house. And Ye- uh, oh, yeah, I I a lot I remember of things break in a house, and I need. You know, to figure out where is this, where is that, whatever. Out are you there, the lady? Uh, wait, are you the lady who this guy? He you figured to, that he would find things in your house and take them? Yes. Uh huh. Mm-hmm. I remember you now. Yeah. And I, I said, don't let him go. Has, he, oh, put, he or has or puts, 
or put something in the house, right? Was I worried about him putting something in the house that shouldn't be there? Well, uh, no, no. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm worried about the uh, two different things. So, first of all, I don't know if he's trying to work anything against me with the restraining order now that I got to talk to him, like, because he always said that I'm, I'm lying, you know, it's not true. I'm the violent one, yeah, if you can believe that. Mm-hmm. Um, so I'm wondering if he's trying to do something sneaky like that, you know, by taping or whatever. And on the other hand, yeah, he, uh, he was the one hiding money and other yeah. stuff in the house. And I was wondering, does he still have anything in the house hidden? Uh, or Remember, I remember I told you to never let him be alone in the house, have somebody go with him wherever he goes. Did you yeah. do that? Yeah, yeah, of course, he's never alone, but still, he <laughs> he's really uh, sneaky. And after uh, um, starting to talk to him, uh, no matter how little, uh, I was so depressed. The first day, I cried the entire rest of the day, so I don't know what's got... Well, that should tell me. you something. I think you need to start listening to yourself more. That's what I hear. And what's his name again? Florin. Pardon me? Florin, that's what? his name. Florin? Yes. You whispered it like he couldn't I'm hear sorry. it. I'm sorry. If, if he said it low, he wouldn't hear it. Florin, okay. He's not around, is he? No, no. Okay. Well, let me look into you and him. Uh, how old are you again? How old is he? What does he do again? I'm 45. He's 56. He's an electrical engineer. Right. Okay. Florin, Florin. Let me go into you first. Joanna, Joanna. Joanna, Joanna. Lauren, I just feel like you shouldn't be putting up with anything. You shouldn't listen to him. You shouldn't think about him. You should. You have a lawyer, right? Yes, I do. And even uh, I have. I am so depressed. I cannot fill up the divorce paper every time. I have to fill up. You know what in a house and what's worth. I get so depressed. I have to put it down. I, I'm not able to do it. And it's not. Then have somebody help you. Do you have a friend or a sister? I have nobody that close that will do that to me. All I have is you know my kids. Uh, friend's mother we try talk to a little bit but not uh-huh. well i know. just feel like you need to have somebody come in and help you make a list of everything maybe somebody who does this professionally hire somebody uh okay. you got to get this done i just feel like this is sucking your energies he's sucking you you're letting it happen sorry to say yeah you're not taking honey you're not taking care of business you know you're not mm-hmm. doing what needs to be done and i totally understand i've been divorced twice i know how it sucks you out and you just feel like collapsing fainting on the couch and, you know, not coming to for two years. But uh, I'm hearing really strongly you got to get this taken care of. Hire somebody. Hire okay. a neighbor kid, a teenager, somebody to go through the house with you. Do all this stuff. Get it done. you got to okay. get rid of him. Let me run to him a second. Florin, 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 Florin. What's going on with you? Is He's just going to wheedle and deedle you. He's going to just cause you more and more problems. He's going to try and block things. He's going to get things his way. He knows how to work you. He knows how you, to make you feel bad and, un, and unsure of yourself. He knows all this, and he's good at it. This is not good for either of you. Neither one of you are good for each other. You're very bad for each other. Okay? It's like you bring out the worst in each other. Are you aware of this? Yes. Okay, good, good. So what I want you to do, hire somebody. Again, it can be a high school kid, any college kid. Get them in there. Go through everything. Get everything done. Block it out on the calendar. Write a list of what you're going to do every day. If you got to go lie down for half an hour, do it. Set the timer. Get up and get back to business. Don't let yourself get blocked. Don't do it. They're very adamant with me. They want me to even yell at you, okay? Are okay. you used to being yelled at? Did he yell at you a lot? Uh, he used to be mean, yeah. Okay, well, these beings aren't mean, but they're almost yelling at you. They're saying, you've got to get off your tuffet and make this happen, because he won't. He'll block, block, block. you got to do it. I'm going to give you some courage. Anybody out there who needs courage and strength, bam, 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 woo, woo, bam, 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 and lots of energy, woo. Go eat a piece of cake or something. You know, do something nice for yourself and then get busy, okay? All right. Where, uh, I'm sorry to be so hard on you, darling, but no, I have to I be. I understand. I understand. I got the whip out now, and I'm lashing you with licorice. There you go. Choo, choo, choo. <laughs> Let you. us know what my, you do. My health. I have a pain. Uh, um, I have a, a tumor in my neck, and he was squishing that a little bit at uh, that time. But anyway. I remember uh, that. I remember him squishing. Yeah, I kind of. 
bugs me and it makes me think maybe I should really take care of that or right now or it's something that I keep postponing. I just want to do Don't it postpone anything. Don't. No. The word for you is stop postponing. You postpone everything. You got to stop it. You got to take care of your health. You got to take care of your life. You got to take care of the divorce. You got to do it, do it, do it. Just and, do it. One foot in front of the other. Okay, darling? Okay. I'll be thinking good thoughts for you, Joanna. Let us know, okay? Thank I got to go, folks. Uh, well, the time just flies. It does for me anyway. I hope it flies for you too when I'm on the air. Please come back and see me next week and next week and next week and forever after. Uh, well, I don't know about forever after, but I certainly enjoy myself and I hope you do too. I love, I love all of you. I love being with you. And, um, see you soon. This is Venus Antrecht with the Dear Venus Show. <laughs>